Hello, welcome to Financial Insider Weekly. I'm your host, Michael Gray, CPA. My guest today is Mark Erickson. Mark is a family law attorney. His office is located in Campbell, California. Campbell is close to San Jose, and San Jose is adjacent to San Francisco. We like to say that uh, San Francisco is adjacent to San Jose here. Anyway, uh, some people call us Silicon Valley. Okay. Anyway, Mark graduated with uh, a JD degree, that's his law degree, from Santa Clara University School of Law in 1979. He was admitted to the California State Bar and U.S. District Court, uh, Northern District of California in 1979. After working for another attorney, mostly in the area of civil and business litigation, uh, from 1979 through 1984, he founded his own law firm in 1985. He became a certified family law specialist by the Board of Legal Specialization of the State Bar of California in 1987, only yesterday. And he has lectured and presented seminars for many groups, including as a teaching assistant and guest lecturer at the Santa Clara University School of Law. And in his alter ego, his secret identity, uh, Scott, not Scott, Mark, sorry, Mark, uh, enjoys playing high hockey. So he's, he's actually a pretty tough guy. And he has two sons who are 22 and 25, and his older son is actually taking the bar exam today. It's July 26, 2011. So why would I have a divorce lawyer on this show? Because we're talking about a divorce-related topic. Uh, today we're going to talk about spousal support, and I call it Divorce California Style, and we're uh, talking about spousal support today. <clears throat> now, as we get into this, uh, I just want to caution our viewers again, first of all, that we're talking about California law here, and uh, Mark is a California attorney, I'm a California CPA. Um, the laws vary somewhat from state to state, so you need to be aware of that. Uh, this is a very complex area of law, that's why Mark had to get his specialization, took a lot of time and effort to do that and to keep it up. And so we're not going to cover it in 28 minutes. Uh, this is just a, an introduction, uh, and it's intended to be part of a continuing conversation you're going to have with your own lawyer, because you need to talk about your own situation. So with that, Mark, thank you for coming and being my guest today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So let's get into our questions. Uh, first of all, what is a definition of a spousal support? Okay. Uh, spousal support, uh, it's also known as alimony in many jurisdictions. In California, we call it spousal support. And okay. it's uh, normally something that's paid monthly in a specific amount, uh, generally to assist the um, a more needy spouse, at least needy in terms of uh, financial assistance. It's something that may last for a specific finite duration or maybe an open-ended order. Um, and it's something that the court has jurisdiction to award in a dissolution of marriage or a legal separation action. Um, and uh, it's something that could start at the very beginning of the action and be paid while the case is in progress. And then it could be something else at the end of the case when you have a judgment that could survive uh, after the dissolution of marriage. Okay. Uh, just one other thing. It is um, by law, provided it meets the requirements of the Internal Revenue Code, and there are quite a few requirements, right. such as it must be in a written instrument, uh, it is tax deductible to the payor, and the recipient of spousal support must include it in their gross income for California state and federal income tax purposes. Right. So, since you brought it up, <laughs> okay, uh, there's a couple of things related to this. So one is that uh, usually for it to qualify as a tax deduction, it has to terminate at the death. So in other words, you may have it for five years, but if the, um, the other spouse that you're paying the spousal support to, if they die within that five-year period, it's just gone, it's finished. Um, and I guess I'll just mention that this is something that is surprising to many people. Uh, that they get spousal support and then they have to pay income taxes on it. And so um, some of this can be handled by some tax planning sometimes, but um, 
you know, it's important to just be aware that this can happen. And the, when a higher uh, income spouse is paying it to a lower income spouse, there's actually a tax benefit because you're taking advantage of those lower tax brackets for the uh, recipient spouse. Right. Assuming you're filing separate returns. Well, as, well, and assuming, yeah, you're divorced. So while you're still married, uh, yeah, that's another issue. Well, if you're filing a joint return, you're not going to get the deduction anyway. So That's right. Okay. All right. Well, how has spousal support changed over the years? Well, I would say um, the law has not changed tremendously, although uh, from time to time we still get new statutes and case law and spousal support. Um, in terms of what actually happens in practice, one of the interesting things I've seen happen is uh, the um, change between how men and women see spousal support. When I started practicing 31 years ago, it was rare, if ever, that I saw a woman paying spousal support to her husband. Um, nowadays, with younger couples, I, I won't say it's necessarily equal, but I'll say it's very common now that you see the wife is the higher earner and she is the one that is likely to be ordered or requested uh, that she pay spousal support to her husband. Uh, that just you didn't see that much, and it's really changed a lot, say, the last uh, five to ten years. So it's becoming more and more common, and I think we'll continue to do so as we see um, now th these days that, uh, uh, I don't know the exact statistics, but maybe it's roughly equal the number of men and women attending and graduating from college and uh, graduate school. Yeah, I think the number of women may have actually surpassed men. I, I, I can tell you that that's certainly the case in, with the accounting major. Yeah. And I, it may be becoming pretty similar in the law, I'm not sure, but uh, anyway, there's, there's some groups like engineers that are still predominantly men, but there's others where women have been coming on strong and, uh, and we've been seeing it that statistically, and I think I may have even heard this, uh, you know, with this recession because there were so many men that lost their jobs that I think there actually may have been a point where um, in this particular recession, it started about 2008, uh, that the majority of households may have even had a female breadwinner. Yeah. So, and it's really hard on the ego of us poor guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway. Well, something else that, that uh, I don't think was as common when I started practicing is um, it's become more common that the husband is younger than his oh. wife. Oh. Didn't see that as much 30 years ago, um, but uh, it, it's not as um, uncommon today to have the wife not only be the higher earner, but perhaps she's been in her career longer, um, so she's you know, gone beyond uh, her earning capacity has developed more than perhaps her husband's. The cougar syndrome. Yeah. Okay. Hooray for Demi Moore, huh? All right, so how do you apply for spousal support? Okay, um, normally if, if there's a significant difference in earnings or earning capacities, someone will request it early on, shortly after, or they'll make their initial request when they file their petition for dissolution of marriage. It, uh, seeking a temporary support order, and this would be an order that would be in effect during the uh, divorce process. Uh, you need to file a motion with the court, and uh, normally that would come up for hearing, oh, maybe in the uh, 30 to 45 day range after filing a request, the other side would have an opportunity to respond. Both sides would file uh, documents with the court called income and expense declarations where they disclose their income and expenses. Mm -hmm. uh, usually these hearings are put on a fairly short calendar. Uh, that uh, with a maximum of a half hour time for the court to spend on the hearing. And the court, primarily in the area of temporary support, is looking at the income of each party, uh, tax considerations such as um, the interest deduction for a mortgage if uh, one of the spouses is in a house, mm -hmm. the property tax deduction, uh, if there are children, uh, dependency exemptions, uh, perhaps adjustments if they're 401k contributions being made or mandatory retirement for, say, a teacher or uh, someone working in the public sector. 
once that information is input uh, into a computer program, an answer comes out and it tells the judge essentially what the temporary support order should be. And, and uh, most counties in California have their own schedules that they adopt, so it's fairly easy for the judge to make a quick decision uh, for setting temporary support. It's not always so easy, though, um, where you run into problems is where you have income disputes, mm -hmm. um, self-employed people. Uh, it can be difficult to determine what is a self-employed person's true income. You know, what if they have a, a restaurant or some other business? Um, their income may be variable. And so it can, it can become very complex. The system tries to make it easy to set a quick temporary spousal support order, but it isn't always easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there separate judgments for terminating the marriage and for financial issues like spousal support and dividing property? Well, there can be. Um, we have uh, the concept uh, known as divisible divorce. The law provides that you can have multiple judgments in your dissolution of marriage case. So you may have one document that terminates your marital status. You may have another document or judgment that divides property and debts and you may have another judgment that addresses uh, child and spousal support rights. So it wouldn't be unusual for there to be a separate judgment that only resolved the issue of permanent or judgment spousal support. Um, we call the process bifurcation where the court can cut the case into multiple pieces so you don't have to resolve all of your disputes at a single time in a single document. So I guess I've I think I've heard of some cases where you know, it may be years before this, like a property division is all done and so forth. It can be. 